ride with Britt Reed in the thrilling adventure, The Boathouse Mystery. The Green Hornet strikes again. Yes, sir. I'm coming. As the two sinister figures left the low black car and moved toward the waterfront, the swirling gray fog seemed to reach out with entwining tentacles, like some slinking malignant creature of the sea desirous of preventing their approach. Tentacles which reluctantly dissolved into wispy swirls of enveloping mist as they came in contact with the dreaded figure of the Green Hornet and his companion. I think I see outline of small buildings slightly to left, Mr. Britt. Yes, that should be Rich's boathouse, Kato. Flash your light on my watch. Oh, yes, sir. What time is it say? 11.30. Axford tell you police close in on boathouse at midnight? That's right. The anonymous note the police received said that the man responsible for the disappearance of the plans for the Richwood anti-atomic bomb device would meet with the Green Hornet in Richwood's unused boathouse at midnight tonight. What do you think motive be for sending note? First, to point suspicion at the Hornet. And second, to get rid of the men who actually made the deal. Evidently, they don't know the top agent who finally got the plan. Well, authorities busy grilling men they hope to catch, the top spy may get away, no doubt. I want to get to those men before the police do. Maybe we'll get a clue to the one who sent that note and involved the Hornet. Come on. Briss and Cato cautiously approached the small building and soon stood before a door on the land side of a boathouse. A door which evidently opened into a room above the mooring platform. I see a dim light inside. Yes. We'll probably have to force that old door. Get ready. We'll hit it together. I ready. All right. Now. Richwood's Enterprises, you're probably the man of... Oh, no, I... Oh. Oh, yes. Cato. We came too late. Is he... Norton's dead. Murdered. Murdered? Yes. Now, look here. <laughs> Knife in back. It must have happened just before we came. They fixed this room up as part of an office to have so something as a meeting place. Two are getting away. Yes. That trap door with them must lead to the landing below. Come on. Get 
Stop not murder. Hey, you are, lady. Had a rich with enterprises and bow and disappears with important plans. There you are, sir. Straight by search for green hornets. There you are, sir. Be all the fathers. Yes, he is. So you'd better stop for going around slamming doors, actually. He's in his office talking to Gunnigan. Huh. Wonder what got him out of bed so early. It's funny, but I never thought to ask him. Anyhow, it isn't that he's in early. It's just that you're so late. Late, am I? After chasing around most of the night getting scoops and things for the sentinel while you were snoozed away at home oh, taking okay, it in. Okay, Skipper. After all, I guess the Daily Sentinel would fold up if we didn't have you to bring in the headlines. You can say that again, Casey. I'm the <laughs> Ah, you and your sarcastics. I'm going into the theory. What's more, Gunnigan? I did think of not. Oh, good morning, actually. Hi, Reed. How are you, Gunnigan? Ah, uh, morning. What are you saying, Chief? Well, as I was saying, I did think Norton was mixed up in the disappearance of those plans. But now I'm inclined to think otherwise. Hey, yeah, now, Reed, how can you sit there and say that I'd like to know? Soon it's as plain as the nose in your face that Norton was dealing with the harlot who stabbed him in the back so to get out of paying off, no doubt. Chief, as long as you keep your opinions to yourself, let us print the news as we get it, I won't argue with you. The authorities considered an open-shut case against Norton and the harness. If they catch that murdering harness, they'll get a lead to the mission plans and the spy passed them on to. Well, perhaps. But it seems to me if they find the person who sent that anonymous note, they'd get a direct lead to the one who has the missing plan. <laughs> it's easy to see that the harness himself sent that printed note to cop's headquarters, Reed. He wanted to put the finger on Norton. Oh, really? Seems to me the finger's been put on the Green Hornet. And like Sarge says, tis the harness himself who put himself on the spot by playing spot with the cops. Is that the general opinion around headquarters? Sure. And why not, I'd like to know. And they're concentrating their search on the Hornet alone? That's right. And to my way of thinking, Reed, it's time for you to start worrying that it is. Well, why do you say that? Yeah. What's the meaning of that crack, Axford? Well, now. When they catch that spalpeen, Reed will have to pay a lot of dough for that standard reward, won't he? Oh, that. Uh, by the way, Gunnigan, send someone over to interview Richwood. Okay, Chief. Well, let me go, Gunnigan. I'll get him to talk. That I will. Sure, sure. Go ahead. But don't be gone all day. Huh. Why do you have to walk that where you're going? And let me know how you make out. Sure. I'm on me way, Reed. Frankly, I'm very much interested in this case. And perhaps Richwood will say something that'll give us a new slap. I'll get to see him when I tell you exactly what he says, Reed. See you both later. So long. Reed, I'm glad you're here. I can tell you and Gunnigan about the interview at the same time. Back at last, sir. I knew when I let him go, he'd be all day getting to see Richwood. Here it is, almost six o'clock. Ah, keep your shirt on, will you? Big shots like Richwood are hard to see. You can't just walk right oh, in. Oh, forget it, It's all right. What about the interview? Well, no. It was this way, Reed. I went to Richwood's place, and after waiting for a heck of a long time, I got in to see him. I told him who I was and all, so he seemed quite willing to talk. Mr. Richwood. I don't care if I do. I understand you want my views on the unfortunate happenings of last night. That's right, sir. I must say it's been a great shock to me, especially coming on top of the loss of our plans. Sure, sure, I know. But um, about Mr. Norton, do you think... I know what you're going to ask, Mr. Axford. And I know, of course, what the authorities believe... What I must believe, much as it hurts me to do so, and that is that Mr. Norton, whom I trusted above all others, betrayed that trust by selling through his plans to foreign agents. Dealing, of course, with the Green Hornet. Uh, that he did, sir. Did you have any suspicions at all about Norton when you first missed those plans? No. As a matter of fact, if it hadn't been that the police received that note and then heard the Hornet leaving the motorboat, I... 
would have sworn that Dorton died with his boots on, sitting there at the desk over some company work. And... Uh, did you know about that office in the boathouse? Yes. Mr. Norton wanted privacy to write a scientific book. I suggested he use the old boathouse I owned up the river. It's hard to believe he'd pull a stunt on you like he did, Mr. Richwood. Yes, it is. I... Ten o'clock, we sat over a bit of brandy in the study of my home, talking. Then he left. I little thought then that at eleven thirty he'd he'd be slumped over the desk in the boathouse with a knife in his back. Uh, too bad. Uh, do you think the plans will turn up? If they find the Hornet, they'll get a lead to the foreign agent. I'm sure has his plans. Well, there isn't much more I can tell you, Mr. Axford. Except that the loss of those plans and the murder of Norton is That's about all he had to say, Reed. He sure felt heard about Norton turning against him and selling those plans. I can understand his feelings, Jack. You better write up that interview and give us a rewrite. Okay, I'll get right on it. I'll get a spread ready in case we catch the Hornet, King. It's best to be prepared, Gunnigan. Let's hope they do catch Norton's killer and find to recover those missing plans. It'll make quite a spread for the Daily Sentinel. Here's some more letters to the editor, Mr. Reed. Did you look them all over, Miss Case? Yes, sir. And there's one on the housing situation that's quite interesting, and I thought... Well, you read them out and send Gunnigan the ones you think should be printed. It's almost seven o'clock. You'd better call it a day. I wanted to finish the letters you gave me, and... Well, I'll be leaving shortly. No use killing yourself. (laughs) Well, I've always said I wanted to die with my boots on. (laughs) So if you find me someday slumped over my desk, (laughs) that'll be it. (laughs) Well, let's hope nothing like that happens to you. (laughs) I... What's on your mind? Another letter? I won't moan in mind. No, I no, no, nothing. No, I, I was just thinking of something else. Oh, well, I just wondered. I'm going to call it a day. You better do the same. I'll see you in the morning. All right. Now I'll get these letters to Gunnigan in the morning. Good night. Good night. Well, Gunnigan's got a spread ready in case they catch the holiday. Maybe you'll get a different spread to print. Miss O'Reilly's apartment? Cato, forget about dinner. As soon as they get home, we'll be going out on the Black Beauty. Yes, sir. It's ready. Good. And see that our weapons are in order. Tonight, we're going out to catch Norton's murderer. Green Hornet Adventure in just a moment. And now, back to the Green Hornet. After telephoning to Cato, his faithful Filipino valet, and the only person knowing his identity as the Green Hornet, Britt Reed left his office at the Cecil building and went to his apartment where Cato was waiting. You still the phone. We go to catch murderer of Norton. Do you know who murderer is, Mr. Britt? I think I do, Cato. But we'll have the proof if I can make him show his hand. Well, how do you do that? I haven't time now to explain. I'll tell you about it as we drive. Everything ready? Yes, sir. I check gas weapons and get black beauty ready. Good. Let's get going. Stepping through a secret panel in the rear of a closet in his bedroom, Britt Reed and Cato went along a narrow passageway built within the walls of the apartment itself. This passage led to an adjoining building, which fronted on a dark side street. Though supposedly abandoned, this building served as the hiding place for the sleek, superpowered Black Beauty, streamlined car of the Green Hornet. Rick Reed pressed a button. The great car roared into life. A section of the wall in front raised automatically, then closed as the gleaming Black Beauty sped into the darkness. What 
what you tell me make it seem you suspect the right man this time, Mr. Britt. But how you get proof? Cato, what I want to do is to figure out some way to get him and his spy friends together at the boathouse. Then I'd tip off the police. Well, it's not easy to get them to go to the boathouse. I know. But there must be some way. If I could all... Cato, stop near a drugstore so I can use the phone. I'll leave my disguise in the car and talk to him on the phone. Yes, sir. Was there a drugstore in this vicinity? I stopped there. Good. Step on it. A short time later, Britt Reed had entered a phone booth in a drugstore and dialed a number. He was talking in a terse monotone. Now get this. Let me do the talking. I've already told you I'm the Green Hornet. The man you sent to kill Norton knows now that you try to frame him as well as myself. I can take it. He can't. He's planning to leave evidence in the old boathouse that will point to you and the man who got the plan. I'm being hunted, so I'm laying low. You'll have to get that evidence yourself before he tips off the cops. I'll come to you when I get the chance for my share of the dough you got. It'll be my pay for this tip-off. So long. Maybe man phone police and tell that Hornet call him. Then maybe police come here. If he phones the police, it will be proof that my suspicions of him are wrong. But you still think he's guilty, party? I'm almost sure of it, Kato. He slipped up on too many points, as I told you. We'll know for certain before very long. But our work is done for the time being. I return to this city, I'll have more for you to do. That was a good idea, putting a finger on Norton, Wiser. But there's one thing I'd like to know. Hmm? What's that? Why did the cops come to that boathouse just as I was leaving? I just got away in the boat by the skin of my teeth. Ah, forget it, good. Main thing is, you did get away. You've been well paid for your work. Yeah. All packed and ready to leave for the airport. It's a good thing it was foggy in the river last night. Them cops shoot straight. They would have flooded I you. I told you to forget it. What difference does it make? Oh, I've been thinking. You know, I almost didn't go through with it. Only your friend promised to pay so much. When I got to the boathouse last night and Norton met me at the landing, he was kind of friendly like. Then we went up inside and we started to talk. We're going to find the place, Mark. All my pals call me Gus. Oh. Well, sit down, Gus. No, no thanks. I ain't staying long. I was told you were bringing a boat over to leave in the boathouse, so I agreed to come here and see if you made it all right. <laughs> I had some work to do anyway. Yeah? Yes, I'm working on a book. Uh, Signed. Wait a little while, I'll drive you into town. You ain't going into town, Norton. But what do you mean? Just sit right where you are. This is a knife I'm holding in your back. I said you ain't going into town, see? What? You must be joking. Why would you maybe want... Maybe the cops will think you sold those plans they're looking for. Or maybe... It's Professor. Just... <laughs> Listen. I have a wife and child. It's a Christmas Eve. Stop the felon. You ain't the only guy that's got a kid. As I said before, you ain't going to town, Norton. Now or ever. Surely you're not letting your conscience bother you about Norton. Oh, I just got to thinking about him taking a rap for something he didn't do. And me making an orphan out of his kid at, at Christmas time. I was an orphan, you know. Don't be an idiot. His child isn't an orphan. Mother's still living. Well, half an orphan then. Just ain't right. Hello? 
Oh, you. I'm in a hurry, so... What's that you say? Oh, he did, huh? He told you what? He's planning to do what? I see. Now I understand why he was talking to me as he was. Yes. Yes. Yes, I'll meet you there. And bring Gus with me. Hmm? <laughs> He'll come all right. Goodbye. Who's that? Why is this? What was he talking about? You'll soon find out, Gus. Get your things on. We're going to meet somebody at the boathouse. Sure. Who are we going to meet? <laughs> Someone who wants to see you particularly. He'll take the boat. I told him you'd be sure to come along. Well, why shouldn't I go along? What? Well, uh, I was afraid you wouldn't want to. So I'm using this gun. It's a good thing you're so obliging. Come on. I hope they come before police. Maybe we make a mistake to call police too soon, Mr. Britt. Listen, there's a motorboat coming to the boat. Huh? It's them, no doubt. I'm sure of it. Look, can you see anything? Oh, far it's too thick. There's no doubt they've gone inside with the boat. Come on. We'll go to the end of the boathouse facing the water. There's something we have to do before the police arrive. Well, that's true. And third, he said he thought 
that at 11.30, Norton would be slumped over his desk with a knife in his back. We only ones know exact time Norton died. No, the killer also knew. But the police found Norton almost ten minutes later. I guess that Richwood was involved when he was so definite in his fact. The capture of Richwood and Spies, clear name of Norton and Green Hornet. Yes. Of course, it isn't much, but it be some consolation to Norton's widow to know her husband was innocent of the charges against him. Oh, it's too bad he'd be murdered. It not mean very merry Christmas holidays for wife and child. Oh, the Sentinel will see to it that they have some compensation for their loss. At least for the child will have a good Christmas. We'll make sure of that. <laughs> the people will not think much of Green Hornet. But tonight he show up traitor, help police catch spies, and clear man's name. A good Christmas present to city. <laughs> Cato, you make me feel like Santa Claus. Well, at least we've done our part to clear up the boathouse mystery, if nothing more. Definite. The Green Hornet's finished his job, and Britt Reed's tired. Confucius say, man who lead double life sleep with one eye open. <laughs> Well, Britt Reed never get much rest while Green Hornet keep him always on the move, Mr. Britt. Cato, you said a mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> 